Hey, um, I've been uh, under the weather today, so I'm not sure if I'll make it to class, but at least I'm trying to create a video of what I'd like to cover. Um, I'm starting with Blender, which is this program right here. It should be installed on the virtual machine. Um, you can also uh, download it online. It's free and cross-platform uh, Linux Windows. That should be one for Mac. Um, it's uh, a lot like the artistic tools used to create movies, etc. And what it does is allows you to create objects like um, before we've used the solid teapot with the glut function what if we want to render our own thing like a spider or, or some other weird thing so what blender allows us to do is to manipulate these things called meshes so in OpenGL the only thing that can be ultimately rasterized is a triangle um, even though we often decompose meshes into quads so in this case we have a cube which is decomposed into four flat faces. If I go to edit mode, I can see, and if I click on this button down here, I can select each individual facet or face. But um, in fact, before it gets drawn, those faces are converted into triangles. And I can show you by, if I hit the A key, I can select every face. And if I go to mesh, uh, faces, and I hit triangulate faces, I can see how this object, even though it's made out of quads, is really represented as a bunch of triangular pieces. But when we're editing it in Blender, it's useful at times to think of these pieces as quads. I pressed Control Z to undo there. Right? So um, you can um, select multiple things by pressing Shift um, S. Um, I can subdivide. If I press the W key, I, I get some menu. There's there's a whole bunch of of different things I can do. Um, I can subdivide twice. It gives me a, a whole bunch of faces along that edge. Um, you know, I can you know hit E and, and extrude a piece out. So you can kind of see how you could kind of make. Uh, some interesting objects here. If I did want to make a spider, it's already beginning to look a little bit like a spider to me. By clicking on these arrows, I can move the axes around. R lets me rotate freely. If I press R and X, I can rotate just around the X. R and Y just around the Y. All right. Um, e again to extrude out. R and Y to extrude around the Y. E again. E again to extrude out. So you can see how that would work, and with enough time, you could make some interesting objects. I don't think that we want to spend our time on that. If I press uh, Control N, I could get back to the default thing. I'm going to delete that. So the Blender, if I hit Add, it does have sort of a default mesh called the Monkey, which is going to be good for me to show you things. Blender's user interface is quite complicated because manipulating 3D objects is hard. Over here we have a little plus sign, a little triangle it's there. If I drag it off to the right, it disappears. So there's these little panels with different properties for the object you might need to show. But if I hit edit mode, I can see that this monkey I added is made up of a bunch of quadrilateral faces. And then if I come down here on the right, I can show the face normals. So if I press the A key to deselect everything, I can see that every face is the same color. And the shading is lit as if the face is a plane perpendicular to this little blue stick. Which gives the object sort of the appearance, appearance if I go back to object mode, that it's made out of a bunch of crystalline uh, facets. Right. Um, <coughs> so, in fact, Triangles can be associated either with every face or also they could be associated with every vertex and then you can interpolate the color across the face. So if I come if I do that and I I switch to smooth shading, 
I can see that the object now, it looks a little bit more rounded. Every face isn't the same color. But um, it still it doesn't look that great. So this is sort of a hack, a thing that we do in computer graphics to pretend that there's more detail than there actually is. Um, if I actually wanted that detail, there's other things that I can do, such as um, subdividing the mesh to keep making more and more faces until eventually those faces get so small that um, when I look at it, uh, here we can see that probably looks a lot better. When I look at it, I can't identify uh, the individual uh, faces. Um, even even if I don't use smooth shading. You know what I mean? Here I can still see them, but you know, if you kept subdividing, they'd be smaller than a, a pixel. Um, there's also shaders and other tricks we'll learn to make how to make things look smoother than they are. I'm going to control Z a bit. So this is the monkey, and what we want to be able to do is, in our OpenGL programs, we want to be able to render objects just like this monkey. Um, it would be nice to be able to load or download something from the internet and use it as an asset or a resource in a game. Now in OpenGL we can draw quads but for now I'm going to discourage it and I'm going to say try to convert all of your meshes into triangles by pressing, if you open it in Blender you can hit the A key and you go mesh uh, faces and then there should be a triangulate face or you can just hit control T now the entire mesh is made out of triangles if I go back into object mode I can see it faceted like this and then you can go file export and we're going to be looking at a file format called OBJ so you can save that thing as something like monkey.obj and hit export. What that'll do is in um, my C drive it creates a monkey.obj which contains the geometry and another file called MTL which tells me what color the monkey is. If I edit this OBJ file then I can see what is contained in it obviously a, a reference to how to what the material properties are and um, a bunch of lines where each line begins with a letter and is followed with some other data. So mtllib is a command which tells me that the rest of the line describes a file that describes a material. We won't be using that. O is another tag which we won't be using. It describes individual objects in case you have more than one object in a file. We're going to assume one object per file. We're going to ignore the O key. V is a tag that tells me that the next, the rest of the line contains three uh, coordinates. So those three coordinates are the locations of a point on the mesh. So the coordinates would be the location in space of a single point at the corner where multiple faces meet like this. That's called a vertex. Um, it'll list uh, many vertices, often all together, and then you hit another tag so there's a tag called use MTL you can ignore. So you need to be able to ignore tags that you don't care about. S describing a surface. And then F. So this is an important tag. So every face in the mesh, every polygon in the mesh, is going to be described by multiple indices into the array of vertices. So index 1 is the very first vertex in the file. So index 1 is, is this vertex. Right. Um, you see, um, you have a face that connects 47 to 1 to 3, a 4 to 2 to, to 48, and um, this gives you the information that you need in order to piece together all of the geometry. Notice that this doesn't tell me normals. I can calculate the normals myself if I want to. It's also possible when I'm exporting the OBJ file. Um, over here on the left, I can choose to include normals. I can choose to automatically triangulate faces. I can choose not to write materials. 
you see you see what I mean so um, you, you set your properties and then I can save it as monkey.obj export and um, now when I go to edit that thing it's, it's been modified um, instead of just all of the vertices starting with a V tag I also have these tags called VNs so a VN describes a vector now remember I have to remember these vectors are these V's vertices not vectors are points these VNs are vectors these are the normal vectors they indicate a direction perpendicular to the to the to some of the faces and when you list a face you have to list it this funny way you have F for the face you start with the index of a vertex and then you have a slash and then you would have the index if you were using texture maps of the texture coordinate and I'm not ready to talk about those yet so you're gonna see two slashes in a row and then the index of the normal that goes with this corner so each one of these triples you know um, there's no white space so it's three numbers separated by a slash is a is it really a corner of a face so every corner could have in this case the same normal or each corner could have a different normal depending on how you want to shade it so in order to save and load and render these we're going to need to write first code that can just draw a mesh so we can learn how to deal with meshes and then we're going to write code that can parse this file and um, actually render uh, the mesh you know that you can save and edit and modify like this with that I'm going to stop and um, I'll probably pick up another video that renders a mesh